Okay, next up, Guardians, right? Wow, five of six now this team has won. Yeah. Now, I know they're beating bad teams. They're supposed to. But yeah. yesterday, I, yesterday was an interesting game because they get three runs in the first inning on a Jimenez home run, and then the bats just completely went to sleep. Plezak was great. Pitched six innings. I think he gave up two runs. I thought one of the stories pitching wise for the for the Indians or for the Guardians yesterday, Morgan and Classe out of the pen. They they go two and two thirds yeah. of scoreless baseball. Even though it took us two or three of his outings before we could remember his name was Morgan. Because <laughs> yeah. I kept saying the young kid right. with the yeah, great yeah. stuff. Eli Morgan. We know his name well, now. They were great yesterday. They've won five of six. They're a game behind. 500 and yep. they're four and a half now out of second first place, place yeah. in second place. Yeah, I, listen, you know, we had a debate. It might have been on our practice week whether the Guardians would be in the mix at the beginning of September. Right. And you guys all said no, and I said yes. And I, I, I still don't think they're going to make the playoffs, but I do think Francona has a way of leading his team at least to stay in the mix and overachieve. The roster as is is not an over 500 roster in my opinion. No. But they'll clean keep playing well especially against these bad teams. They've struggled against the good teams. The combo of Morgan and Classe right now at the back of the pen has been very good. Tremendous. And what's interesting about Morgan is a couple of things. First of all, he was a starter in the minors and even last year with the with the Indians. I think he could be a starter. He could be, but he's he's really thriving in this role and not as an we're so used to the guys thriving in the bullpen being these overpowering yeah. fastball guys he's and that's not, not yeah. his thing. He's but a great he, setup guy. He's been great, and he can go multiple innings, which you love, right? They had to bring him in in the seventh. Yeah. Um, and and he did. He got out of that inning after a couple of walks. Uh, who would who would uh, who would pitch the, the big lefty? Um, Henches. Henches. Yes. Thank Henches you. got a he, little I'm bit of trouble. His name right now. Yeah. But Henches had got in trouble with a couple of walks, and then Morgan got out of it and really got two pop ups. Got out of the inning. Then Finn came back for the eighth. Too. Yes. Yes. And Classe has been lights out of late. Yeah. He had a little struggles early in April, but he's. And in a league where there are maybe eight reliable closers, I think the Guardians have one of them. Not, he may not be on the top of the reliable list, but he's on the reliable list. Well, you got to talk about, uh, and I, I've said it before on the show, yeah. I think you don't underestimate the value of uh, Tito Francona, right? You just, what he, good management brings to any professional club, even when you have undervalued or uh, undervalued uh, players, yeah. right? They seem to get the most out of those players, right? And that's, I think that's what's happening now with the Guardians. Always, yeah. yeah. Their window is really going to open next year. I think that's when their contention window gets thrown open. This is who they are. They're a 500 team. They're going to they're going to get hot. They're going to go cold. They're going to win yeah. some. Like they're They'll 500. They'll beat the bad team. teams. They'll beat the bad teams. They'll lose to some bad teams. They'll lose some games they should win. They're a young team still trying to figure it out. Ultimately, I think they're a 500 team. But this division, they could hang around. The White Sox have been shredded with injuries. Yep. The Twins, I still don't believe in the Twins. I don't believe in their pitching. So they may still linger in the race. Just because their division they're in, I don't think they're good enough to make a deep playoff run right now. But this was this year was all about once they missed on Matt Olson, once they missed on these other guys, yeah. they were going to play all the kids, and we've seen that. They've got a lot of decisions to make. I think I talked about this last time I was in. They have a lot of decisions they have to make with the forty man. It's packed full of prospects right now. Mm -hmm. It's it's a lot untenable. of middle field prospects. It's untenable yeah. to keep it this way. They're going to have to make some trades. They could be buyers at the deadline, regardless of what their standings are, right. just because they have to start freeing up some of these forty man spots. And, and start sort of rebalancing the roster a little bit. So they're they're looking at as many young kids as they can. And I think next year the window, and I hate to say wait till next year in yeah. Cleveland, but next year I but, think is when this contention window and, really gets uh, thrown the over. The ownership help will be firmly in place next year because we know that he's taken on the minority owner. I don't but, know why that hasn't happened yet. Yeah, okay, I it was so, supposed to have well, happened. It, it, hold he's got a ton of money. It's just the legal process. We, I mean, they need obviously a financial boost. Here. Yes, they need well, to, and that's coming but, but in, in the, the form thing. of the minority owner, and yeah. he is going to spend money on this. Well, team. so I had a lot of conversations in spring training about that, about an injection from a minority owner. And basically, the way it was explained to me is, if you're expecting David Blitzer, which is who we're talking about yep. here, to come in and start writing checks to cover losses, that's not going to happen. Not to cover losses, no. But where but Blitzer, to make the team competitive, yeah, where, where it I, makes sense. I think it's a multi-year process here, and really, where it I is. think where they are interested in Blitzer is his real estate background and sort of developing the area yeah, yeah, around yeah. Progressive Field. So, I think that garage so, is going to look a lot differently. Yes. And they're going to start. So if you can build up some economic development and mixed use well, yeah, around the stadium I, 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 and then pour that, this is your area, yeah, yeah. and pour that back into the t payroll, that's how they feel like so they're let, going to win. So so I know for a fact that, that, that the Guardians are keen on Progressive Field being the front door to the entry into downtown. Sure, Park. right. So if you look to the west of, of 
progressive field. They have all this area that they want developed. Untapped. Right. It yes. has to be here. Yeah. You don't go to any major market where they're not developing around the yes. public It's stunning stadium. the lack it's of stunning. development around it's the downtown stunning. ballpark stunning. here in Cleveland. But they're, they're kind of pinned in. We did a big study on this at The Athletic last year. They're kind of pinned in. It's like a highway. You know, Carnegie's sort of like a highway, and yeah. you got the cemetery right yeah. there. Right. So And the Dolans don't own Jason. any of that land. Jason. So they have to figure out. So first of all, they got to buy that land. So Bull Stadium, do you know what that used to look like when I played there? Oh, Chicago? Yes. Oh, it was. What was it? Rough. How rough? Pretty rough. <laughs> and what does it look like now? It's better. I went yeah. back there. They're pushing baby carriages around. Maybe one day happened. here. But no, this is not going to happen overnight, because though. Because you have leadership at the top that yeah. says this is going to vision. happen. Yeah. This Someone is going to happen. Yeah. Right. It's the same story with Burke Lake Front Airport. It's the same story with the access to the lake. Right. Somebody at the top of the food ticket yeah. has to be. This is about to happen. Yeah. Right? And, and Jason, you're right on the development, but the Blitzer yeah. group, they, they they want a winner here. Absolutely. They want to win. But this and, isn't and, and this isn't going to be Blitzer signed not, on. Not like right. that. No, 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 no. And the payroll goes up 25 no, 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 no. million next no. year. Like but, that's but not how it's going to It is going to it turn. It better around. go up 25 million whether it's him or not. This is ridiculous. They're not losing money if the payroll goes up 25 million. I don't believe they are. I, I should have thrown a higher number. Yeah. You know a much what higher yeah. number. Yeah. They, the 25 listen, would get us middle of the pack. The not even line on this team is I know there's a lot of young players, but not they're not all going to pan out. Correct. And for the most part, the Guardians slash Indians, most of the hitters they brought up in the last decade have not panned out. But they've sort of, I think, altered the way that their their approach to scouting with hitting. Yeah. They've really gone the contact route. Who makes good contact? It's almost like the pitchers. Let's focus on guys with control, and we can build up the right, arm but strength. But how many guys on this current roster are you sure are starters in the lineup? Are definitely. Well, I think that's starters. what they're trying to not figure out many. right now. I think Josh Naylor's a stick. I think Jimenez Naylor is, is a, a starter. Stick. I yeah. know you don't like him, but Naylor I is a starter. Him. I, I think Naylor plays somewhere. Yeah. Miles Straw plays somewhere because of his defense in the contract. Jimenez, I think, plays somewhere. It's curious to me that they haven't played him at short. Yeah, but none of these guys are front-line players. By the way. And none but of them are going to ever be front-line They're, fir they're first-year guys. But you're seeing enough well, to believe. Well, not Straw and not Naylor. They're not first-year guys. No, but they're young. Yeah, yes, they're, but they're never going to be frontline players, I don't think. Well, I think that right now – You said starter. There's a difference no, between yeah, starter yeah, yeah. and – No, yeah. yes, that's true. I, yes. Listen, I think Naylor I think Naylor is I think a lot better better than you're giving him credit But too. they need a couple of more elite-level players. Yes, oh, and they no don't question. have those but guys. But they're going to no get question. those guys when they bundle up all these prospects that we're yeah. talking you about. You don't want to bring them in until you're ready. I think that right and now – And that's what trying, I think they're doing. They're trying to see, okay, Jimenez fits at second. I think they're holding short for Gabriel Arias. It's the only thing I, I can think, think so of. too. Or else they're just trying to maintain Rosario's trade value by playing him at short and trying to move him. Maybe in a midseason deal. Terrible. He's been terrible. Yeah, he's not good. Jimenez is an everyday player, I believe. Owen Miller's proven to be an everyday player. Naylor's proven to be an everyday player. So you're starting to see it fit. Obviously, you have Hosey at third. You have Miles in center. So now you can look at this and say, okay, we need a corner outfield bat. Let's take three or four of these shortstop prospects we have yes. and go get a marquee bat. But this year is about figuring out who fits where. And then really press and go, I think, at the yeah. deadline this summer, uh, this winter. And, and I think you're going to see a lot of movement and a lot of trades. I just think all the guys you're naming as starters, I agree they're starting caliber players. I just think they're lower level starting caliber players. I hope I'm wrong. I would like, I think they need two legitimate bats in this lineup, like two frontline players. And that's hard to get when you're going to spend $50 million. And that's why they'll come and trade. Yeah. I think they'll come yeah. and trade. I, and I'm a little worried about the pitching, too, because I'm not they, sold yeah. on Plesak or Savali. Zach Meisel told me they should get a starter at the deadline, that they, re, they need to go Wow, that's, that blows me away. Really? Yeah, yeah he's, he thinks that they that, that's – I mean, listen, Bieber, Man. we've already talked about Bieber. I don't think he's going to be here long term. No, They're going to have to come to a decision no. on that. Right. Espino's probably ready next year. You can plug him in, yeah. probably. But that's no guarantee. There's right. injuries. Yeah. Savali and Plesak, to me, are not in the level that we're talking no. about. They're huge right. question marks all the time. Absolutely. Yes. McKenzie is. I think McKenzie McKenzie's he's the real a, deal. He's always been a top prospect, yes. and now it's all coming together. I do worry about his health. McKenzie, he's, he's, yeah, I he worry body. about a strong wind coming and blowing yeah. him to he's, Akron. He's just, I, when you watch him pitch, you're like, not that he's violent, like, you know, I don't think he's a Clevenger, but he's yeah. so thin. He did have a major injury a couple of years I ago. I know he did. And yeah. I'm so I'm worried that, you he know. a couple. He missed a lot of time. He missed a lot of time. So. 